You know what? One of the greatest privileges I have, friends, is the fact that I get to have a platform to present what God is doing in and through people's lives. And so I'm so excited about today's guest. I have met her quite a while ago, and I have interviewed her before, but we have her on today because she keeps doing amazing things for God. And may I introduce to you the unstoppable Crystal Hill Homer. Hey. hey, Crystal, I'm so excited to have you with us. <laughs> Thank you, Shun, for having me. I really yeah. appreciate this opportunity and just to get to see you again. I know. I get. I really missed you. But you know what? I feel like a stalker because I've been following you on Facebook and following what you're doing and just making sure that, you know, God's still blessing you abundantly like he always does. But friends, let me tell you a little bit about our show today. Don't turn it off. I want you to listen. If you're out running, doing laundry, shopping, you know, ironing, God forbid you're ironing, I just really want you guys to take a minute and tune in as uh, you're doing that. Because God is a God of second chances, isn't he? New birth, new life, fresh start. This is a story that is just that. You guys, if you have ever had an oops in your life where you wish you had never done that, God is a God of second chances where he opens up brand new doors. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old has gone. The new is here. And so, Crystal, thank you so much for coming on our show. Yeah, thank you again, Shug, for having me. Um, I, I just wanted to say something too real quick. You have, you said you're a Facebook stalker. Well, maybe, maybe you do do that. I don't know. But you've also been um, a huge supporter You've offered um, kind of like mentorship or to call if there's anything you can do. And coming from uh, a excess, successful woman, that means a lot to me. And it has. And I just want to say thank you for that. Oh, I just love you. You know, would you tell our friends, when was the first time we met? Um, in 2014 uh, at Shakopee Prison, my first incarceration when I was uh, eight months pregnant. Yes, and right after church service, you prayed so, for me. So we got a chance to meet. I prayed over you. Um, unfortunately, um, you were back in prison again. But the blessing is I got to baptize you. I'm certainly excited about that. Uh, friends, we baptized almost 700 women in Shakopee Prison over all the years. Um, and Crystal Hill Hover, I will never forget, is... I'll never forget what you look like. You had your head shaved. You're sitting there looking tough. And uh, you're just you're just full of life, just absolutely full of life. Um, and so I had interviewed Crystal um, back in November 2020, friends. Um, and the show was called From Felon to Unstoppable Force for Good. I did a part one and part two. And it's show number 122 and 123. I want you to go back and listen to that because we go into the details of what had happened in her life, how she became incarcerated, what were some of the events that had happened, um, and, and her baptism as well. But, um, you know, what's it like behind the, the bars, really? And we did talk about that um, uh, at length. So I really want you guys to go back to that. But I'm so proud of her. And right now, if it's okay with you, I would like to just kind of go through a little timeline um, that she had sent me. And I'm going to stop and ask a couple questions as we go along the way. Are you okay with that, Crystal? Of course, yes. Yeah, she was kind enough to send me a little timeline to refresh my mind. <laughs> so before we uh, get to that, could you tell us why were you incarcerated in the first place? Um, the first time I was incarcerated for a fifth degree drug possession, um, and I don't want to minimize it. It was a, a really dumb charge. I, I had prescription methadone with me and a gram of weed. So that was a fifth degree. I probably could have been charged for more than that. So I kind of lucked out. The second time was a first degree drug possession. I um, was on parole at the time, so which made it worse. And while I while that was happening, I got another first degree at the same time, drug possession. So when you're in prison, there's something called boot camp, you guys, where you can go to what's called boot camp or CIP. It's a wonderful program. The women get to go into it. For how long is it, Crystal? Um, it's a total of 18 months. It's six months in and then uh, 12 months on intense supervised release. 
and if you screw up once during that time, you get put back in what's called general population. And then you have to make up the time that you had done while you were in boot camp. And that's another place that I saw as well. I was in preaching the Sunday morning services. Um, I just, I literally remember, Krista, right where you were sitting in that room at that time. Um, but, you know, praise God, what happened was that um, you got released in uh, September 16. And no, I'm sorry, in July 5th, 2016. And what did you do when you got released? Um, The first thing I did was uh, went straight to treatment at RCCS, which was an inpatient residential. And it was the last place I wanted to go, but I I had no housing. I had nowhere to go. So um, that program was was built for people with drug addiction and um, criminal mindset. So I went there immediately and then... um, as soon as I was able to get past that 30 days, I enrolled in school full time. Okay. So she, did you get your GED in prison? Yep. The first time I was in there while I was pregnant. Yeah. So that's really a wonderful program for women in prison. They can get their GED. They're thinking, they're thinking straight for the first time. They can start to work hard um, on their education and him for her ministries, H I M number four, her ministries, look it up.org. Um, we have scholarship programs as well for women who uh, want to further their education when they have come through our program as a mentee uh, uh, from prison. And so um, as I'm looking at your timeline, um, July 5th, 2016, uh, you graduated from boot camp uh, after a one year in- intense supervised release and four years supervised parole. You guys, that's not an easy thing. They watch you constantly one upon release. September 2016, you did what? You enrolled in college. I did. Full time. Sorry. Full time with the goal to achieve a master's degree, MBA, you guys. Um, and talk about a woman with drive. Now, what was the turning point for you, Crystal, when you, you know, you've been using drugs, you're in prison, you went to treatment, all of a sudden you're going for your master's. What happened? Um, it's, it's crazy, I'm sure, when I say it, but uh, it took... My CPT, um, it's a therapist that you have, you spend about um, six hours with every day for six months with your squad. She's the lead person. She told me that I was very, she would always tell me how I was the most intelligent person on our squad and that I better get out and take my street smarts, street smarts and intelligence and do something good for the world. And uh, that's, that's where it came from. That's when I decided I was going to go for business. Isn't that amazing where one person can make a comment that sticks in your head and then you go with it? I mean, I think that was a God appointment, definitely. Does she know? Have you talked to her since release? I mean, does she know that you're winning awards and you've got degrees and all of the wonderful things that you're doing based on what she said? I don't I tried calling there, but she's not there anymore. So I don't know how to get a hold of her. Um, So I don't know if she knows. But, man, I wanted to thank her so much and tell her. Yeah, but um, I have let other people at Shakopee know, so maybe the word got to her. (laughs) I hope so. I hope so, because it's just an encouraging word. You know, really, and this doesn't just apply to people who are incarcerated. This is people anywhere in the world. Just an encouraging word as you come along them, alongside them. Um, Okay, so uh, September 16th, you enrolled in college as a full-time student. December 7th, you graduated RSCCS inpatient treatment program, and that's R. CCS. It's based out of Minnesota. It was really a wonderful program. I hope that uh, I've heard I've heard wonderful things about it. Inpatient treatment program. July first, two thousand seventeen. You co-founded One Love Housing Sober Living. Would you tell us about that? Yeah. So this is, um, I, I believe, um, uh, a God moment for me. I was at the time. I was just a, about a few months before that I was about to get off um, ISR and go on to regular parole. And I knew that once that happened, I would be able to finally get a chance to go leave the state and pick up my son, but I would need a place for him to live. And I was in the crappiest living situation. Um, I was paying 550 bucks for a room that's the size of my office, probably smaller than my office here. Um, And I was very close to giving up hope. I'm like, there's just no way I can do it. And then a friend of mine, uh, Amy Sensor, introduced me. I, I'd been they've been praying for me and praying for me at our, our weekly meeting on Thursdays at Salvation Army. And in Amy, um, 
called me one day and she said, I, I've got this guy I want you to meet. And that was the owner, co other, the owner of One Love Housing. And my life changed. As soon as I talked to him, he, he had me out of that apartment the week later, packed up all my stuff. And it was just my, the biggest turning point in my life since prison. Well, and, and not only that, look at the amazing things that you've done in that program. And I'm going to uh, tell you guys what the website is. It's onelovehousing.com, one, O-N-E, love, L-O-V-E, housing.com, all one word. And uh, look it up. You guys support them. The phone number for their office is 763 763- Five three three one two three four, and after you successfully completed ISR and CIP, then you were reunited with who? My little guy. My little guy. Your My son. Time. Yeah. And how old is was he at the time that he you was, finally got? He was three. He just turned three. And you were pregnant in prison. I remember that. Yeah, the first time, and um. You know, I, I could have been with him after I got out. I delivered him and then I got out two months later. I reoffended within my four months of parole. So pushed it out a lot longer. Um, so that was the first time that, I mean, I'd seen him once in between that time for 24 hours, very high from driving down there and just to see him. And But that was it. Yeah. And he's adorable too. He's just so cute. And now you became a full-time mother for the first time in your life is what you had, had shared with me. Um, so 2017, now you've been with One Love Housing and you opened three sober homes yeah. in uh, in Minnesota. Again, onelovehousing.com. You guys look at, you guys, I can't tell you what impact it makes both for men and women to have a safe place to live when you get out of prison, I get so frustrated with the fact some people won't give them a second chance. And what are we supposed to do about that? We're supposed to come alongside and be Jesus with skin on and give people an opportunity and a second chance. Yeah. Um, and so how many sober homes do you have now? Um, we had five. We have four now. We um, just uh, decided to, to, I don't want to say get rid of, but sell Cambridge um, because the city is against sober living up there. So it's just causing too many problems. Mm -hmm. um, so we're at four, but um, took on a 25 plex in Minneapolis. It's not open yet. Uh, about six more weeks of rehab and that, and it'll open. Yeah. Yeah. So if people need housing. Um, is that the direction to go? Onelovehousing.com? Yeah. Yes. And um, you know, if we're full, um, our intake person would it will steer you somewhere that you know might have a bed availability for sure in minnesota um, yeah yeah and then, you know something i'd like to say too about one love is it a lot more came with the housing um todd is a a very i, I didn't know god until i met todd <laughs> it's so weird that, that rhymes but um he he was so set on getting me to go to church with him every saturday at, at it was the crossings church at the time every Saturday. And, and I did, that was one of the conditions of him, you know, bringing me out to Champlain and stuff. And so I did, and I ended up finding a, a real church family and uh, September of the first year we started going to church together, our pastor had said uh, September, whatever the date was, I want you to bring a friend, bring as many friends as you can. So Todd and I um, bought a bus and we filled a bus. We brought it that week. And then we started, started it for three years every week a bus to church and i know uh easter the following year we took 352 people for an easter service and gave away cars so wow yep yeah, yeah, so we're still doing that not maybe giving away cars but the bus still goes <laughs> on saturdays um and, and then out to dinner afterwards at broadway pizza or pizza ranch or wherever they go now you're still doing that how can people find out about that do they contact the church um, no, they could contact that same one love phone number that you had just said. Um, okay. And Tanya is who will answer. And she, you do not have to live in our housing to get a ride to church and a meal to church. So the phone number is 763-533-1234. We'll have that up on the screen. Hey, you guys, we're on uh, YouTube as well. So you can see beautiful Crystal Hill Hover on there as well. And we're going to post links to each of these locations. If you go to himforher.org, you'll find our links and you can just click on it and you'll go right there. Um, and unfortunately, terribly, you had lost your brother uh, December 29th, 2018 to an overdose. So this is close to your heart. This is, you are living, walking and breathing 
what it means to be Jesus with skin on as you walk alongside people who have challenges. And so I'm so sorry for that, Crystal. Yeah, thanks. But the good news is, August 24th, you got married. Yeah. You yeah. got married. So now you're, you've are you got a wonderful husband. Your beautiful son is living with you guys. Um, and something else happened. God kind of took you in another direction. He gave you something and put it on your heart. Can you tell us a little bit about the first recovery gym? Yes. Um, I think so. Um, well, Paul Kusterman is uh, the owner, well, the founder of RCCS treatment, the treatment facility I went to when I got out of prison. So after I graduated, uh, he and I still kind of, um, well, I reached out to him a few times with help as I was building a, a residential agreement for a, a sober housing company I've never knew anything about. Um, so there was some contact and, and he was following me on Facebook and seeing that I was still going to school, still doing what I was doing. And he planted a seed for me one time when we went to go jump uh, skydive and it said something about becoming his successor. And that stuck with me so much. All the times I wanted to give up was school. But even though he ended up uh, leaving our CCS, however, uh, he had this great idea about um, a recovery gym. And he pitched it to me and offered me to, to do it with him as a partner. And I was like, heck yeah, this fitness is, you know, I come 25 years of eating disorders. And um, I didn't really know what fitness was until I went to boot camp. And then learned how much it was doing for me the first time I stopped uh, working out when I got out. So, yes, I was all for it. Let's do a gym that's for only people in recovery. And, I mean, it also the hugest opportunity of a lifetime. I mean, I don't know how often you go to treatment after prison. And then the founder of that treatment center offers to, like, be a partner with you in a, in a business. Um, but that happened. And with it's come so much. You know, it's all blessings from God. I mean, yeah. you just can't write this stuff. You know, it's just all <laughs> blessings from God that he puts this all together. Now, you guys had opened it. Um, it had gotten started in Maple Grove, but then unfortunately COVID happened and you guys uh, found that you had to close it. Um, but you know what? God had another plan. This is what I love is that one door shuts and you think that's it. And then God has another door that opened. You graduated um, and got a Bachelor of Arts, uh, a Bachelor of Business Administration degree. Uh, you were not only got the degree, then you were awarded honors in business for completing with a 4.0. She's working. She's raising a child. She's married and she's pulling a 4.0. I mean, way to go, Crystal. I'm so happy for you. Um, and when you graduated in 2021, um, you were inducted to the National Society of Leadership and Success after graduating again with a 4.0. Um, and were you looking at this as a roadblock? Were you looking at this that God had another plan with the gym closing? And then what happened to change directions in that? Those are great questions. And um, uh, yeah, so when that happened with COVID, there was like, I mean, sure, there was a uh, it wasn't meant to be, you know, I'm not good enough for that. Um, but it was also like a blessing in disguise, you know, um, even if COVID would, wouldn't have happened, we would have never survived. And I learned that as I was, cause this happened as I was just finishing my, um, bachelor's degree. And, um, at that time, Paul had said, we, we had auctioned off some of the equipment cause it was a huge space and we needed to be able to store it, auctioned off some of the equipment, um, and even got some of the money for it, which I shouldn't have because I didn't buy it. And um, Paul said, you know what, here you go, you have it all. And he gave me everything and said that, let's just sit on it and figure out what to do with it. And, you know, like, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to school. So we're just not going to put time into this right now. Uh, and then when I started my master's and I started to diagnose the company and really figure out that it would have never worked anyway, um, I, I had the idea, okay, well, why don't we make it a treatment center? Because if we do that, then we're for sure putting, it's making the gym, putting it into the lives of those recovering our mission statement. Nobody else is doing it. And I was able to take all six months it took me to get my master's and focus on how to build this. Well, if it would work, how it would work and how we were going to do it. And then you were able to have professors come alongside you with this concept while yeah. you're in college. I mean, yeah. I think that's absolutely fabulous. 
Um, and, you know, you had said originally in 19, when you were going to open it, it was just going to be a recovery gym. Yeah. Uh, but then, since then, you realized you wanted it to be treatment as well. Is there any other gym like this around? I've never heard of it. Well, we're not, we're not um, considered a gym. Okay. We're considered, uh, the city of Minneapolis made that quite clear <laughs> that we cannot be considered a gym, but, um, we are the, there are many treatment centers that have gyms, um, within the walls, but there are not outpatient treatment centers that utilize the gym space and the equipment and actually incorporate that into the treatment programming. So a, f- a few of the groups per week are in the gym and facilitated by a like licensed alcohol drug counselor who is also a fitness coach, a uh, level one CrossFit coach. So they are, no matter what, learning some type of exercise um, and wellness twice a week. It's part of it. And then there's other things that they can be doing, but it's it's part of the treatment. That is wonderful. And um, they can find this um, at tcwcrg.com. Is that correct? Yeah. And so they can look it up. They incorporate fitness into the lives of those recovering, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, and so uh, July 1st, 21, you applied for that license with the DHS. What is the DHS? Oh, my gosh. It's the Department of Human Services. <laughs> and they, that was like, I, I will tell you what, this has been, this was the hardest a venture I've ever been a part of and um, been behind. Um, it was a huge fight, not so much with DHS. They were all for it, but with the cities because it's a gym and a treatment center. And there were so many times when that, and, and that I just wanted to give up. And even sometimes right now it's, it's expensive. Um, there are, you, you don't see revenues. Like we started, we, we, we had services the first day, but we won't see money for that for like six months. And it, it's just, it's, it's so much. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you but, take donations? Um, we, because we're not nonprofit, uh, personally can, but we are partnered with Be Kind of People who's in the same building as us. So they can, um, uh, we have something worked out and that, cause we get food from them. There are things that we, can work out for for that so and yes. that's called be kind to people yep i love that i love that and you are tcwcrg.com twin cities wellness center and recovery gym i, I just got a couple of questions to ask you yeah. um you know as i'm reading through and i had asked you for this bullet list i'm like you i can't even keep up with all the stuff you've been doing <laughs> since you left prison so proud of you girl um Thank and so you. let me ask you a couple questions what keeps you going um okay so one is my son um i i want to show i want to show lead by example so he can be somebody and not have to fight to be somebody like i am Mm -hmm. and mm, the second thing is i just want to show others that change is possible regardless of who you are where you're from what choices you've made it doesn't matter you can change and so can life around you those are my two drivers that keep you know that is huge. Um, let me ask you this question. What is the best thing we can do for those who are looking for a second chance? Give them a second chance. And if you don't, if you're not in a position to give them a second chance, give them the resources, help them find the resources that can. Yeah. Amen for that. How can we be praying for you? Um, to be transparent. I have a really a hard time finding time for family and friends right now and uh, struggling financially to keep things going. Are we going to fall because of it? No, there's always, we'll figure it out, but it's, it's definitely really tough right now. You know, I'm so proud of you and I'm so proud of everything that you are doing. We will put your um, links on our webpage at himforher.org. You guys, please find them. Please look them up. Please share this good news with other people. And I am so proud of you, Crystal Hill Hover. You girl are unstoppable in Christ. If you guys have never said yes to Jesus, maybe today is the day that you invite him into your heart because you got the greatest joy ride ever in front of you. This is Shugbury. You know I love you. Love you, Crystal Hill Holver. Over and out. <laughs>